In a previous video, we took a look at the dopamine pathway and a whole bunch of molecules that are involved in the dopamine pathway. Remember that this pathway is one of the major ones that's really affected when someone smokes cigarettes on a regular basis. And so basically what this picture shows you is a summary of all the molecules that we talked about that are involved in the dopamine pathway. All of these molecules that you see here are some sort of protein. And so remember that if a cell is making a protein, that kind of implies that the cell has a gene that tells it how to make that particular protein. And so what we're going to do here is take a look at those genes and kind of talk about the considerations that someone makes when they're trying to decide which one of those genes has the most potential as far as a, a gene that might play a role in determining whether one person is more susceptible to smoking addiction versus another person. And so since we're uh, talking about the genes that encode for these proteins, how about if we take a look at the nucleus of a human nerve cell. So because it's, this is a human cell and because it's a somatic cell, you would expect to find 46 chromosomes uh, within its nucleus. The genes that encode for all of these molecules that you see here are basically scattered throughout the chromosomes. And so we'll use a differently colored stripe to represent each one of those genes that encodes for those molecules involved in the dopamine pathway. Remember that we should have two copies of each one of those genes because we have two parents and we inherit one copy of each gene from each parent. And so again, say that you're someone who's trying to figure out you know, what causes one person to be more susceptible to smoking addiction versus another person. And you're, uh, additionally, you're trying to figure out which one of these genes has the, the best potential as far as a gene that uh, plays a role in that regard. So what we're going to do is kind of list the criteria that um, would make a gene uh, potentially a good one to study for this particular purpose. And actually what we're going to do is narrow our focus. So not only are we going to talk about the criteria that would make a particular gene uh, a, a possibly good one to study for this purpose, but we're, all, we're going to try to figure out what criteria would make a specific region of a gene a good one to study for this particular purpose. Right, so we're going to narrow our focus and not only look at entire genes, but we're, we're going to consider specific regions of each gene. And so what we'll do here is list some of the criteria that would give a gene region a lot of potential as far as possibly influencing smoking behavior between different people. So uh, one example of a gene region that might have a lot of potential in this regard is a gene region that has sufficient differences between different people. And so here's the idea behind that. Say that you have two different people. Uh, one of them is addicted to smoking, whereas the other one has tried smoking but has not become addicted to it. And you're trying to find out, hmm, I wonder if there's a particular gene that uh, caused the one person to be more susceptible to addiction as compared to the other person. And so say, for example, you think, hmm, I wonder if there's a specific region within this TH gene that might be causing the difference in smoking behavior between these two people. And uh, say, for example, that uh, you took a look at that particular region and you noticed that it's completely identical between the two. Well, if that's the case, if you have a, a gene region that's completely identical between the smoker and the non-smoker, then basically you can rule that out as uh, one of the things that might cause the difference in smoking behavior. And so basically that's the difference here. You want, if you're trying to figure out uh, what, what gene region has a lot of potential to study as far as, you know, something that might cause a difference in smoking behavior, you want to make sure that it, at the very least, shows some difference between different people. There's a few terms that are associated with this idea of uh, different gene segments between different people. Uh, one term is polymorphism, and one way of defining a polymorphism is a genetic variation that occurs in at least 1% of the population. And uh, actually for our study, we're going to uh, choose a fairly, or we're going to want to choose a gene region that has a fairly common polymorphism, somewhere around 5% polymorphism. And so uh, the reason why we want to choose a gene region that tends to differ uh, among 5% of the population at least is so that when we um, consider the study group for a population we want to we want some sort of guarantee 
that the gene region that we're going to study is different between or within that population. Right, so again, here's the reason why uh, we're going to choose a fairly common polymorphism. Uh, another term, so it, it turns out that there's different types of genetic variations, there's different types of polymorphisms. One type of polymorph uh, polymorphism is something called a single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP. And you're going to see this term uh, referenced quite a few times in your assignment. And so you might be able to deduce what a, something called a single nucleotide polymorphism is. It's uh, whenever you have a genetic variation between two people, and what causes the difference is uh, just a, a change in one single nucleotide. Another example of a type of gene region that might have a lot of potential in terms of influencing smoking behavior is a region where uh, the difference in that region is present within all ethnic groups. And so here's the idea behind that. Say that you're considering four different populations of people, uh, one of whom is indigenous to Asia, one uh, group is indigenous to Africa, one's indigenous, indigenous to Europe, and then the fourth is indigenous to North America. And uh, say that if you consider the people within each one of those populations, you notice that they all, uh, that there is a, some variation in a specific region of the TH gene in all those populations except for the one that's indigenous in North America. So say, so suppose that if you consider everyone who's indigenous to North America, they are all identical in a particular region of the TH gene. Uh, if that's the case, where uh, all of those populations, if you consider the people in all those populations, and they all have differences in the region of the TH gene, except for the group from North America, then it would be kind of hard to argue that that particular region of the TH gene influences smoking behavior among all ethnic groups, because uh, despite the fact that there aren't any differences in a particular region of the TH gene among the people in North America, you know that, ev uh, you know that there's differences in smoking behavior uh, in people who are indigenous to North America. So that's just an example uh, to illustrate uh, why it would be a good idea to pick a region in this particular study that uh, has differences that are present in all ethnic groups.